Let's ultrasound. Today we're back in the ultrasound knobology gallery to discuss the field of view or width ultrasound control. Before we discuss the field of view ultrasound control, it's important to define grayscale. Grayscale is a range of shades from white to gray to black, and this forms the basic ultrasound image, which is known as a grayscale image. The ultrasound image is composed of thousands of tiny dots, which are known as echoes, that are generated from the returning reflected sound waves. And these dots are the basis of the scan lines, which together compose the grayscale ultrasound image. The ultrasound field of view, abbreviated FOV, is the area of the ultrasound monitor that is displaying the grayscale image. And this is the shape of the ultrasound image. The size and the shape of the field of view is determined by the transducer and also by ultrasound machine settings. Curvilinear transducers have a sector-shaped field of view and linear transducers have a rectangular-shaped field of view. The field of view ultrasound control allows the field of view size to be widened and narrowed on the ultrasound image, and it's also known as the width control. There's also an ultrasound control called virtual convex, and this changes the field of view shape from rectangular to sector shape, and vice versa. It's also important to note that depth and field of view go hand in hand. When one changes, the other changes. When depth is increased, meaning there's a deeper depth, the field of view narrows in size and structures a further away on the ultrasound image. When the depth is decreased, this is a shallower depth, the field of view widens in size and structures appear closer up. So when would you use the field of view or width ultrasound control? First, let's learn when you should widen the field of view. When using either a linear probe or a curvilinear probe, you wanna keep the field of view as wide as possible when you're imaging a long structure, such as a vessel. And when imaging a vessel such as the Sag aorta, it's okay for the sides of the vessel to be cut off outside of the field of view, as long as the vessel is as elongated as possible. You can also use this when you're imaging a large structure such as a sagittal kidney. In this case, you want to ensure that you can see clearly both edges of the kidney with a strip of normal tissue visible on both sides of the kidney. When you're using a linear transducer, such as when you're doing a breast ultrasound and the area of interest, let's say it's a breast mass, does not fit into the field of view, then you can use the virtual convex button to widen the field of view to a sector shape that more of the large mass can fit into the image. On the image to the right, you'll note the black dotted lines. This is the edge of the field of view if it's left as a linear shape. When the virtual convex button is pushed, the field of view is extended in size and more of the mass is visualized. When possible, try to show a strip of normal tissue on each side of the mass. However, if the mass is extensive in size, this may not be possible. So when should you you narrow the field of view. When imaging a smaller structure such as a transverse blood vessel or an ovary, narrow the field of view so that all the extraneous information around the area of interest is removed. One thing to note, however, it's important not to narrow the field of view so much that information along the sides of the area of interest is lost, such as a mass that's hanging off the edge of a structure or feeding vessels that are going into a mass or a structure. 